Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having a great day. But on the Saturday here in the H, as you can see, uh, it's raining. Uh, it's kind of a reminder. Every time it rains, especially like when I'm getting out in the morning to go do something I know I need to do like this morning, uh, headed to the gym. The rain reminds me of life. And I, I'm actually a person, especially if I'm sleeping or if I'm reflecting, the rain is welcome. Uh, it's relaxing to me. Uh, it can be inconvenient. It could, uh, if I'm not careful, take my mind to places that aren't bright. But when, when I see rain, I see a reminder of the balance of life. Every day isn't going to be sunny. Every day isn't going to be an idea, ideal day for the beach. But every day has still has purpose. Every day still has promise. And the thing you have to be willing to do uh, is have the discipline and the belief to get up in your rainy days and still put in the work get up in your rainy days and still be thankful. Get up in your rainy days and still push forward, understanding that it's those days when you put in the work where there isn't a clear vision of the promise. There isn't a clear um, reminder of the promise. Make your rain your reminder. Make your challenge a reminder. Make your obstacle your reminder. Make the people talking behind your back your reminder. Make the things that you are looking at now as a negative a reminder of where you're going, a reminder of what you're capable of, a reminder of the possibilities and the potential of every moment. You have 86,400 seconds in a day. How you engage each of those will determine the outcome of your life. Let the rain remind you that time is the one thing you don't have to throw away. Wake up, make up in your mind, whether it's rainy, whether it's sunny, whether you wake up to uh, great news, whether you wake up to horrible news, whether you went to sleep last night with all kind of things going on that had you shook. You've got to get to a point where your faith is so strong that you become unshakable that you become unbreakable, that you become unstoppable. And that means that even when the rain comes, you're not shook, you're not pushed back, you're not taken off guard. You just simply gear up and do what you're supposed to do in the rain. That's the thing that I want you to take with you today, that every day has promise. Every situation, no matter how it looks, has the capacity to take you somewhere higher. You've got to learn how to frame the situation. You've got to learn how to frame uh, the circumstance. Circumstances and situations are temporal. They're there for a reason. Learn how to use them. Learn how to view them. Learn how to engage them because those are the things that take you higher. Eagles fly higher than any bird, any other bird in, uh, in the world. And it's because they do something that bird, other birds don't do. They fly into the wind. They fly into the tempest. They fly into it. Why? Because it's that resistance of flying into it that takes them higher. When you roll with the wind, you roll where the wind goes. When you learn how to move against the wind, you let the wind raise you higher and higher. So you take your adversity and use it as a force of elevation. you got to learn how to become tr transcendent in that way. Look. I have been working with people, man, for decades, helping them change their lives, helping them become better, helping them become uh, more effective in whatever, whatever it is they are looking to achieve. I've worked with athletes, I've worked with CEOs, I've worked with small business owners, I've worked with individuals coming out of uh, broken situations. I've dealt with some people who are struggling with major trauma. And I'm telling you, everybody has a gift. Everybody has a fire within them. Some people it's been snuffed out, but the blaze can be relit. The vision can be dusted off. 
you can move in ways you never thought, but what you've got to do is have the discipline to wake up every morning and go get it. What you have to do is be able to see yourself being successful. That's why I created the Visionetics concept and started the Visionetics Institute is because if you can't visualize it, you can't have it. But if you can visualize it, if you can conceive it in your mind, it's God's evidence that it's possible. And so you've got to learn how to see yourself doing things that you once thought was impossible. You got to see yourself doing things that you've always said, well, that's what they do. I can't do it. You got to take the word can't out of your vocabulary. You've got to start sitting up and saying, you know what? I'm going to do this. I see myself doing this. I am this. And I mean, you got to learn how to speak things that aren't yet visible as though they were you got I, I, I say this every morning I call things that are not as though they are and they become and I've literally lived that my entire life it's not a magic quotient it is a declaration and then in the ill of fast told Job said you should declare a thing and it shall be established for you so that a light will shine upon your path and what does it mean it means that when I declare something it has already begun to be uh, move towards me it's mine it's now up to me to move towards it it's up to me to take the actions I need to take to do what's necessary to move towards it it's in those moments when you make that declaration so powerful in your life that you already know you have it. And I'm not talking about some weird cantation type way. I'm talking about the true nature of faith. I'm talking about what faith is really meant to be. Faith is really meant to be this thing that you sit up and say, I know it. I don't have to see it, but I know it. It doesn't have to lay itself out to me in some elaborate blueprint. I simply know it's going to happen. Trust your design. Trust the designer. Trust the system. This system of faith is a beast. It's undefeated. We defeat ourselves. We defeat ourselves primarily by not even trying. Second of all, we defeat ourselves by giving up too soon. Um, we defeat ourselves by allowing other people to whisper the sweet nothings of negativity into our ear. We have to get to a point to where we are no longer defeating ourselves and we're standing in our gifting. We're standing in our purpose. We're operating at the height of our design. We should be living life daily at the level of our design. It doesn't mean things won't go wrong. It doesn't mean that things won't happen. It doesn't mean you're not going to experience setbacks. What it means is you never shook by any of those things because you know where you're going and you know that in time you're going to be there. One of the things I say consistently is that it's my relentlessness that has gotten me to the place that I am now. All the things that I've been blessed to accomplish I got there because of my relentlessness. People will talk about the different things they see in me as assets to do things. Don't realize I didn't start with those. I had to have something to get those. And that same something is still in me. And it's the, it's my relentlessness. And I'll tell people all the time, once I make up in my mind that I'm going to do something or have something, I'm going to either do it or get it or die in the process of trying. It will never come a point where I sit up and fold and say, well, I don't want it anymore, it's too hard. I don't want it anymore, it's taking too long. I don't want it anymore, people are talking about me. I don't want it anymore, people are laughing at me. I don't care what anyone else is doing. When I'm in my zone, I'm going to get what I know I'm supposed to have because if I can conceive it, in my mind, it's God's evidence that it's possible to me. Now I've got to go put in the work. Now I got to believe. And sometimes believing is the biggest part because there are all these confines and constructs uh, uh, with these limiting beliefs attached to them that say you can't do that because you can't do this because only this type of person can do that. That's just a dream. That's a fantasy. That's an illusion. Let it go. Be realistic. People in my circle will tell you uh, especially people who've been around me for a substantial amount of time will tell you, if you want to be around this guy, don't ever say be realistic, because I do. Even if you're not saying it to me, I take it personal. Be realistic is a simple way of saying, I don't believe that it's possible, and I'm superimposing my beliefs upon you. 
it's not allowed in my circle. I don't care what somebody comes up to me and tells me they're going to do. I'm going to say, all right, let's do it. And then it's going to be, you know, are you, I'm gonna ask, are you committed? Are you ready to go put in the work? Because you can do it. I've, I've taken some people from, um, homelessness to being business owners. I've taken people from being average, an average athlete to an exceptional athlete. I have a client now who's an Olympic swimmer, who's right now seated. He's already named to the national team for the year, but obviously has to qualify uh, for the Olympic team at the trials. But as far as uh, being on the team, he's on the national team again. I've got uh, acad uh, academicians and scholars that want to take their academic careers to the next level. I've got uh, CEOs. I've got people who had a dream of being a designer and now designs uh, houses and bags and a bunch. I mean, just coming out of a place. I've got a person who runs their own clinic. I've got a person who uh, became an investor. I mean, it's nothing you can't do. And a lot of times people will come, come to me what I call colorless dreams and dwarf goals. They'll come in with something they've tamed so that it appears realistic, not just to themselves, but to anybody that they may share it with because they don't want to sound foolish. They don't want to, man, if, if, if my vision don't make you look at me like I'm crazy, I'm not dreaming big enough. You, Those who follow me know my favorite quote by Stephen Furtick. If the vision that you have for your life isn't so huge that it intimidates you, there's a good chance you're insulting God. God didn't design you to be average. God didn't design you to be mediocre. God didn't design you to just simply sit around. What are you doing? How are you seeing the world? My goal when I work with clients is to start at the core. I want to really reconstruct. Mm -hmm. about that i got bumped off by an amber alert but like i said my job my, my number one goal is to literally create a situation where i'm reconstructing the self-image because you'll never do anything more than you see yourself being your self-image your self-construct is how you see yourself in the world how you see the world impacting you if you think the world is big if you think life is happening to you you're going to always be at the mercy of your circumstances and situations but if you see yourself as a life changer as a uh, difference maker as someone who can do the things they set out to do then life isn't happening to you life is happening because of you things that you're doing are creating the life and the reality that you are living and you have to learn that your thoughts are creating your reality as a man thinketh so is he this is the beauty of life and you have to learn how to operate in that beauty look in the in the box there's going to be a couple of links there's going to be a link to where you can work with me um, and it's going to be to my primary uh, page for my packages to work with me. Uh, there's going to be a link for a special offer. There's also going to be a link to my uh, The Mind Unleashed course, which is a step-by-step -step process of this reconstructing and rebuilding, getting rid of limiting beliefs and building, empowering and liberating beliefs that allow you to do remarkable things. When you look at that, you're going to see it. And I want to work with five people. So the first five people that sign up will actually get to work with me. I think that's about as many as I can take, at least until some other people I'm working with are done. Uh, but because I'm keeping a certain number, I'm not doing nearly as much as I've done over the years. These last year and a half or so, I've been uh, reducing the number of people because I've been doing a lot more group, uh, one on multiple type situations. Plus, I've been building courses and writing programs. Uh, and that's so that I can reach more people. I can only be in one place at one time so many hours a day. And I want to touch the world. Um, life can be so beautiful even when it's dark if you understand how to move in it. 
with that being said, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Once again, I apologize for the difficulty of that Amber Alert. Don't play. Um, but anyway, again, I look forward to working with you. I look forward to uh, helping you go to the next level. But it's your choice. You have to make the move. You have to be willing. And if you're not in a position where you can work with me now, definitely enroll in the Mind Unleashed course. It's going to give you the foundation you need to change your life. Whether 2024 is going to be your year or not is up to you. But it's not just sitting around saying it and hoping something different happens. It's about doing something different. And in that note, look, I'm out of here. As I always say, I live my life on full so that when I leave this place, I die on E. I challenge you to do the same thing. On that note, I'm out. Take care. Yeah. Yeah. They said I should give it up like that just ain't good enough. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in houston dallas and other areas uh, i'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the odyssey project is doing in the inner cities uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.